In this video, I will give an overview of the basic components of CD Engine. So many of these components will be presented also in other videos in that context. But this is a attempt to cover most of the core components, say what they are, and set them into relationship to each other, when to use this and that, and what is meant by this and that. So um i basically um created um two types of um components so these are called components and uh, the other group i've called building blocks so if we look at the components of the software so we have the workspace we've already talked about the workspace so this is the workspace down here in the navigator these are the folders in which the data for our different projects live. A project is one of these. So a project is basically a folder. Um, and within each of the folders, you have different components. So you have assets and you have rules and you have data and all of those components you need. So a component is basically a um, standalone object. So this is the smallest component you can take out. Say, okay, take this and send it to someone. That is something that in most situations will be a standalone thing. Remember also that these are all um, folders. So in your document folder, there is a CD Engine folder in that there's this default workspace, which is your default workspace. And in there, you have your projects. You could copy one of these folders that's not recommended um, it's better to um, basically just right click on a uh, project and choose export and then you can export it to an archive file um, and you want what you want out of it and then you can save that and then you have that as an exported element you can send to someone so that was the basics of the workspace and the project so really the project is also a folder inside the workspace the scene is the main control so this is a view of a scene so the scene contains the data so data might live in in the data folder but that's just for the import once it goes from so this is the when you are bringing in data from external sources they, they will live in data folder and then you can load them into the scene so the data really lives in the scene and the scene also has the ability to have um, a scenarios so these are these crosses here um, that they are a bit more complex so i'll be covering them in the video for themselves but basically they are illustration of different design uh, decisions so, and then finally, we have the viewport, which is what we are looking at our scene through. So in the scene, we could decide its layers, but in the viewport, we decide things like the camera we are choosing, with how we want the data to be rendered as wireframed or whatever. So these elements are part of the viewport. Also, the viewport has, in this case, I'm using a 3D viewport, but you can go into view windows and ask for other viewports, or you can create an additional viewport. You can have uh, multiple viewports open at the same time. So um, yeah, I have both a top and a side viewport. And if I am in the selection tool and select something in one viewport, that element is also selected in the other viewport. So they are connected. They are working on the same data set. So that was the viewports. And then we have, of course, all the tabs we talked about. So we have our navigator and so on. But they're, they're more part of the, the user interface. And we have what we could call the building blocks. So we have static shapes. So static shapes, you can create them yourself. So 
there are some some uh, building tools. You also have when we uh, started the project, we also imported a lot from uh, from OpenStreetMaps over down here under footprints. I have a series of static shapes. These are all static shapes that I've imported from um, OpenStreetMap when we started the project. But basically, you can also create themselves. So you have a rectangle drawing tool. Um, once you have this type of static shape, so this is a um, a two and a half D, so it's X, Y, and Z, but it's in the plan. But you can also edit it different ways. We'll also cover that in a video. So, but basically, you can extract it so that you can. Uh, relatively easy um create 3d objects um they are these are also considered static shapes so uh, as 2d as the flat ones we had in our yeah so oh, i wanted those the footprints or as a is it 3d or a multi to patch or sometimes also called a shell or a mass. There's quite a lot of terminology that is used more or less systematically uh, around um, CD Engine, but a shell, building shell or a building mass or a multi gun, so whatever you call it. Um, you can have these i've created themselves you can also import them most municipalities in denmark at least or larger towns have 3d models of their buildings that you can import as these multi shapes here so that's the shape we have also dynamic shapes so um if i just get rid of those we um looked at um, our roads before so when we drew a road you have it here this road really consists of two elements so if i go and turn off shapes we can see that maybe i should turn off the background also yeah so this is really the graph but based on that graph so this graph has properties i can select a graph element perhaps that yeah. and you can see this has a width of in this case seven meters if i add shapes again we can see what this does so it has a width here and i change this width to this is clearly wider i can simply modify the shape so these shapes are dynamically created More also, we also saw the other type of shapes that are dynamically created. So if I um, draw in this road here, so I change to my road drawing tool and quickly connect. Like that. Um, this element in here. As um, if I can find it, uh, block and uh, this block here, um, it probably has some small problems with its sizes. Um, it looks like there's a little red thing going on there. Um, maybe I'll have to reduce the size if it to work. So, um, you can see that this automatically started creating elements on it. So, um, these shapes here are, apart from the original one I created, also dynamically created. So, if I take this road 
and modify that boat. So that's this tool here. Select the road and I can change that road. And you can see that the internal shape. So these lots within my element here, they are automatically updated. So this is my I can there. At the moment it has a skeleton subdivision. I can have different types of subdivisions of it. Um depending on what I, I want to model. So these are dynamic shapes as opposed to that building that's in getting squeezed in between all the other buildings here. My original static shape so we have dynamic shapes and we have static shapes the models that are generated so all of these buildings or whatever they come from applying a rule to a shape so we had different rules i think i collected my rules up here so i for instance have this uh, park formal i can drag onto a object and then that rule is applied to that park. I can also drag a and it will build some buildings there. So rules generate models. So these buildings here or those buildings here, they are all models. They are not drawn. They are created based on rules that live in this site these are pk files they have rule packages so they basically rules and assets make safe together matter of fact i can if i double click one of these it will open up in uh is and show that it is a seven zip file and you can see that there are both uh in this case there is uh some workspaces and there is a rule set in it. So all of these can be live inside these rule packages packaged together. Um, so that's rules and models. Static models are typically something that you create from um, from out, or download from outside. Um, there is um, a warehouse for models created in, um, in SketchUp. So if I go to my downloads and I will have this uh, called Super Young here. Let's see if I can switch there. And I'll just drag that into my data folder here. Okay, copy the file. So now this one is here. I can now drag this chem set, which is really a um, a model created in SketchUp. If I drag it to my scene, the it will be expanded because it turns out that this chem set has some coordinates, and inside there are some model elements. But what happened was this. So now this. Super Young, which is the name of this building, has been loaded. And um, so this is a, a, if you need to, this is a, a clearly a mesh model. So many, most of these models you load are meshes that are then draped with some form of coloring or pictures. So texturing. So typically static models or something that comes from a CAD, so Revit, or something more simple, such as SketchUp. We have already talked about our graph network because that was the roads. So the roads is a network as soon as I connect my roads. So if I connect this one to here, I have created a loop and that is then already populated for in this case buildings because it has a automatically generating 
applying a model to these. So um, my um, town uh, quickly develops. Um, so the, the graph network is not only the linear features, but it also defines all of these dynamic elements that are the roads that we have here. They can also be modeled. We will see that in a video where we'll talk about road modeling. So those graph elements have their own representation of the roads, but they also define the block. So what I had here, and this, this was a block. So I can click the edge. So now I have all the way around, I've got the block. I have disabled generation. So this was a dynamic shape. And when that's it, enabled, these lots, as they are called, they are then also dynamically associated with a rule, or some of them are. And that is then loaded in. So graph networks are the basic building element of basically a town. If you're really building the town in, in uh, or the city in in uh, city engine, you will typically start with the graphs, and that will make the blocks, and the blocks will make the lots, and the lots can then be used to generate the buildings. Fine element is uh, talk about is assets. So assets are basically pictures, 3D figures. So um, where did our little park go? So we have a park here. So assets of these men, for instance, um, or people in the park, they are all assets. They live in the asset folder, but they can also basically be simple uh, pictures. So if we look in assets here, we have a sad, international uh, ground floor and you can also put your own assets in here so there's lots and then there's a rook asset if i click on this you can recognize the entrance to the building where the gis um, lecture room is um, and i can then use this if i want to uh, make a building that resembles um, the university i can take this is this is something i pinched out of um, Google Street View and have clipped in as an asset. And then that means that I can use this to create facades um, that look like uh, the university does. So these are the basic building blocks that we have when um, we start creating our built cities. So these are all based on our Net graph network shapes, models, static models, dynamic models. These models, for instance, our park comes from rules, and all of this is displayed in a on a scene in a view, and also we can have our data stored in our project so we have our projects here yeah i have a common rules project um but in this case i was working on this test project and this is then basically my building block so um with this i hope that i have given you some idea of some of the concepts as i mentioned i will be talking much more about these concepts in other videos where I'll be focusing on individual ones, but basically just trying to give an overview of the different components. So um, hope you like the video. Hope to see you in another one. Bye.